Ever tried speeding up your contraptions in Create only to end up with an overstress message? Today in Create Made Easy, we are diving deep into what stress units are, how they relate to speed, and not just how to power our contraptions, but also how to make them way faster. There's a lot to learn in this one, so don't be afraid to pause and rewatch as you experiment with the mechanics yourself. Sit back, relax, don't forget to subscribe, and let's get to it. In the last episode, we created our first contraptions, the millstone and the mechanical press. But honestly, they are a little bit too slow. How do we make them more efficient? You may be thinking, why not just connect two mechanical presses together? We'll get items twice as fast. But when you try to use your hand crank, what? Overstress? It appears that this contraption is overstressed. Add more sources or slow down the components with a high stress impact. What does this even mean? To understand it, we we'll need to talk about stress. But no, not that impending feeling of doom you experienced the day before a deadline. I mean mechanical stress. Stress is creates word for power and it's measuring stress units or SU, which are the numbers that our engineers goggles allow us to see. And in order to understand them, there's two items we need to craft. Using an undecided casing and a compass, we can craft the speedometer. This will allow us to measure the speed of our contraptions later but for now we'll place it back in the crafting table to get the stressometer which measures well stress this can be turned back and forth into each other which is quite handy but for today's video i suggest you get one of each now that we got our ometers it's time to learn the basics of this system in create there are essentially three types of components first things that generate stress like our hand crank then things that transfer stress like our cogwheel and the shaft and then things that consume stress like the press and the millstone so in essence all we have to do is provide enough stress to our machines in order for them to work if the stress is not enough the contraption becomes overstressed this is the base idea behind all of create's contraptions and understanding it is the first step into becoming a create pro let's get started with things that generate stress or stress source Sources. So far we have our hand crank, but this is very impractical since we need to be standing here and spinning this thing. My arm! So we'll use eight planks and one shaft to craft our first automatic stress source, the water wheel. Take a look at this guy, but wait, it's not doing anything. Maybe if we place it in water? Nope. In order for our water wheel to function, it needs to have flowing water in one of its sides. There we go! By moving this water source, we can control if the wheel spins clockwise or counterclockwise. If it has flowing water in two sides, but they go in opposite directions, the water wheel will just stop. Once it's spinning, we can see with our goggles that it produces 256 stress units. This is enough to power four mechanical presses, but at a super slow speed. If we are a fifth press the system will become overstressed this is something important to know it's not that the fifth press will become overstressed but the whole system will and none of the presses will work if we want to add more presses all we gotta do is connect a second water wheel to the first one and make sure it spins in the same direction now we can connect eight presses this is not very practical though but it helps to visualize this Two power sources connected to the same system will add up their stress. We can power four presses with one water wheel, and with two, we can power eight. We don't actually need to count presses or, God forbid, do any math to see this. When connected to a system, the stressometer will show how much free stress the system has, in this case 512, which is what you get by adding both water wheels together. If we connect a press that consumes power, this number will drop to 448 and if we connect all eight it will drop to zero and you will get an advancement if we add another press the number will drop below zero to minus 64 this means that we will need to add more power sources remove presses or reduce the speed at which this rotates but how do we do this that's what we'll see next oof that was a lot of information if you have any questions about what we've seen so far write them down 
in the comments. That's it for stress and power sources for now. It's time to move to the next important part of any create contraption, the speed. Understanding how to manage speed is how we'll get a single press to work way faster. And in order to do that, we need to introduce a new item. By using a shaft and two planks or a small cogwheel and a plank, we'll get the large cogwheel. Look at this big boy. Large cogwheels can do two things. First, they can be connected to each other in a different orientation, allowing us to change the axis of rotation of a contraption. They can even change a contraption from horizontal to vertical, just like this. Their second use is to change the speed at which a contraption spins. It's time to get our speedometer. If we connect a large and a small cogwheel through the side and not through their shaft like this, the smaller one will spin at twice the speed. Keep in mind that small cogwheels can only connect diagonally to big ones and not directly to the side. If we connect two speedometers, this one will mark 8 RPM and this one 16 RPM. RPM stands for revolutions per minute by the way and it creates unit of rotational speed. If instead we connect a small cogwheel to the water wheel and a big one to the side, the speed will be half from 8 to 4. The initial speed at which a contraption rotates is determined by the power source. If we connect a speedometer to the water wheel, it will also mark 8. So, using big and small cogwheels, we can change the speed and direction of our contraptions in whatever way we like. But the natural question now is, how far can we push this? How fast can we go? If we connect a large cogwheel to a small one, and then a large one connected by the shaft, we will keep the speed boost. But if you try to speed things up again by placing a small cogwheel here, it will pop off. That is because this large cogwheel is telling it to spin clockwise and this one to spin counterclockwise. The small cogwheel is connected to both and because it does not know what to do, it will simply pop off. For now, we can just go this way instead and repeat the process over and over until... This one pops off too, but this time it's because it's braking creates speed limit. Things can only rotate so fast. By placing our speedometer here, we can see that the maximum speed is 256 RPM. Anything spinning faster than this will break, so be careful. And that's all you need to know about speed for now. If you got it, hit that like button to show your support. Finally, it's time to see how things that consume stress go into the mix. When you look at the mill stone and the mechanical press in your inventory, you'll see that they have a kinetic stress impact meter with a number next to it. What does this mean? Well, how much stress a mechanism consumes is directly related to the speed at which it operates. The faster you spin something, the higher the stress needed to activate it. The slower it works, the less stress units it consumes. For example, we'll first attach a water wheel to a large cogwheel and a small one that diagonal from it so it speeds up. Then we'll connect a shaft and a speedometer and we'll see that it spins at 16 rpm. We'll connect a small cogwheel through the shaft here so it doesn't get sped up and another one on top and we'll connect a speedometer to this one and we'll see that it spins at 8 rpm so slower than the other one. If we now connect two mechanical presses, the one connected to the slower part will consume 64 stress units and the one connected to the faster part will consume 128. It consumes twice the stress because it spins twice as fast. In the slower part, we can connect four presses before the system overstress, which will happen if we add the fifth one. But in the faster part, we can only connect two before this happens. A third one is just too much for our poor water wheel. All you have to remember to get started is this. The faster a machine works, the more stress it will consume. Consume. And that is how speed is related to stress. Don't worry if it seems like a lot. We'll review these concepts as we put them to use today and throughout the series. All this knowledge is kind of useless if we don't apply it. Let's see how we can use these concepts to make our millstone and our mechanical press more efficient. First, let's address the hand crank issue. My arm can't take it anymore. We'll place a water wheel, water to make it spin, and we'll connect connect a large cogwheel to it. We'll add a small cogwheel diagonally to increase the speed and put our press here. If you look at it with the goggles on, you'll see that a 
it consumes 128 stress units. Now it's time to connect our millstone. Add another small cogwheel to double its speed and connect the large one to the shaft so we keep that speed boost. Then place another large cogwheel connected to the side so we can change the axis of rotation and place the millstone on top. Now they both work and without any hand cranking. But wait, the millstone only consumes 64 stress units. That is because it has a lower kinetic impact than the press. If we look at them in our inventory, we'll see the millstone has a medium uh. kinetic impact of 4 and the press has a high uh. kinetic stress impact of 8. This means that speeding up the press consumes double the stress units than speeding up the mill. Too power hungry. If we connect a stressometer to our system, we can see that we still have some stress left from our water wheel. It might be enough to speed the millstone up. We could do it by adding more cogwheels, but there is one little secret we can also use here. Remember that the millstone can be powered from the bottom, but also from the side. Well, we can do that with the large cogwheel too. And when we do this, it will get the speed boost just as if it was a small cogwheel. So we can get two different speeds by connecting the millstone in these two different positions. 64 up here and 128 down here. This is great. Now we have a mill and a mechanical press. And if we check the stressometer, we'll see that the total is zero. Zero waste. But there is a problem. This press is still kind of slow. Pressing a stack of iron will take ages. When this is done, I'll be old. But if we try to speed it up, the whole system will overstress. The answer is simple. We need more power. Let's add another water wheel and make sure water is flowing to it. If we connect a stressometer, you'll see that we have a lot of stress to spare now. We could add cogwheels to this side to make it spin faster. But let's see if we can save some space by speeding up this side first. You might be tempted to place a small cogwheel here in order to speed things up. But if you do it, it will just pop off. To solve this problem, we could connect the small cogwheel to another diagonal. But we can also place a shaft here to separate these two cogwheels. So we can place the small cogwheel here without any issues. Now we connect three cogwheels to bring things up. And if we place our mechanical press here, it will consume 256 stress units, working at twice the speed than before. Now we can place the big cogwheel again and then connect our millstone but if we take our stressometer we'll see that there's still 128 stress units to use this is enough to speed the millstone up one more time but i won't tell you how to do it can you apply what we learned today to solve this puzzle let me know in the comments if you found the answer oof we saw a lot today using all this we are ready to build our first create workshop but we'll do that in the next episode of create made easy if you miss our intro introduction to create or want to review the basics check out this video my name is bruno and i am out goodbye